Good afternoon. My name is Al Galala, Sir Al Galala. I'm KGOR of the Knights of Rizal. I belong to the Cleveland chapter in uh, Cleveland, Ohio, in the United States of America. I've been um, Knights of Rizal since uh, 2006. And uh, I uh, just recently um, was appointed by the uh, Overseas Regional um, Commander, Overseas uh, Regional uh, Commander, uh, Sir Francis Season, KGCR, as his uh, Executive Assistant. I am also the uh, Deputy um, uh, Secretary at uh, our chapter in Cleveland, uh, Ohio, and also Deputy Commander of the whole of uh, area, uh, Ohio Area Command. I just wanted to talk a little bit about the Knights of Rizal, what we are, and how to be chartered uh, specifically. And um, for the new members who wants to join or think about joining, uh, what are the expectations and the obligations as members, and what are the benefits? Not necessarily in that order. Um, well, first and foremost, what the Knights of Rizal is not. Knights of Rizal is not a cult. It is not a religion. In fact, the Knights of Rizal is... Um, non-sectarian, non-political. Um, um, so we do not uh, favor any political party or we do not favor any uh, religion. However, um, in, in, well, in fact, uh, we have members who are also members of the Mason, which is uh, more on the... Uh, uh, re, uh, on the um, uh, Protestant side, and we also have members of the Knights of Columbus, uh, and so we really don't discriminate. We also have members in uh, international um, in the international arena, anywhere from Australia, Middle East, Europe. Uh, we are also uh, the Knights of Rizal is also not a um, a simple organization. We hold our international headquarters at uh, Port. Um, port area in Manila uh, by United Sa uh, United Nations Avenue in uh, in in Manila. Uh, we have a building there, and uh, we hold our meetings there. The Supreme Council holds the meetings there, and it's a functional uh, office. It's yet it's not just a facade uh, of a of a building. Um, uh, the Knights of Rizal was origin originated from uh, uh, a couple of guys, actually, I think nine guys, who in 1911 decided to uh, be um, seen in their horses and uh, all suit up to celebrate the uh, uh, martyrdom and um, the birth anniversary of Dr. Jose Rizal. In 1911, uh, uh, that was... Uh, the brainchild of uh, Colonel uh, Torres, who eventually became the chief of police in Manila. Um, just to promulgate the life of Rizal and, exercise, and do some um, exercises to celebrate his life and works. In 1916, after five years, uh, the Knights of Rizal was incorporated as a uh, non-profit Corporation just like the Red Cross and the um, and the Boy Scouts of the Philippines. Now the Knights of Rizal is also, I would say, is the only international organization headed by uh, uh, by Filipinos. Uh, as you know, the Mason uh, Knights of Columbus, uh, there are organiza international organizations, but the Knights of Rizal is the only international organization that is headed by. A Filipino. Now, in 1951, uh, a bill was signed uh, with the Philippine Congress, uh, the Republic Act 646, that uh, actually um, made the, uh, uh, the Knights of Rizal a de facto um, uh, government arm. So we uh, by by and it was signed by uh, President Carino back then. So we are actually part. You can say. Uh, part of the um, the Philippine government. So we have close ties with um, Philippine consulates all over the world. In fact, most of the Philippine consulate uh, uh, 
members are uh, are members of the Knights of Resale too. Um, I wanted to talk to also about um, what it means to be a Knight of Rizal. Um It means that you are in one with almost uh, 14,000 members worldwide who are members of the Knights of Rizal. It means that you are uh, patriotic. You believe in uh, having pride in Dr. Jose Rizal, which is um, really one of the uh, most celebrated figures in Philippine, hist Philippine history and it's known worldwide not just in the Philippines but uh, uh, in Europe in, uh, because of his writings and his um, uh, travels and associations not only in literature but also in the scientific world. Um, Dr. Rizal is also um, uh, part of a, uh, a it, more than a person is part of a um, a thinking is a way of life of loving self um, sacrifice for the good of all um, and uh, love of country um, and um, really intellectual exercise more than anything else um, also when you become a Knights of Rizal you become exposed to the Philippine culture and you can expose people from the Philippine culture especially those who are away from the country second generation Filipinos sons and daughters who uh, do not know anything about the, uh, the Philippines you can definitely start uh, by educating them on Jose Rizal and go from there and teach them uh, dances, um, food and uh, ways of uh, the Philippines. Also, you can be uh, involved with uh, civic-minded uh, uh, projects. In uh, the uh, Philippines, the Knights of Rizal has been involved in the uh, National Youth uh, Leadership Institute that is done every year in Baguio, and that is well attended. Uh, by youths all over the country in the Philippines where they inculcate uh, Rosalian virtues and leadership skills to train them for the future. Uh, you can also involve yourself with uh, leadership uh, exercises. You know, you since uh, the Knights of Rizal is a, uh, a formed um, organization with its bylaws, uh, insignias, uh, structure, uh, organizational structure, you will become exposed to um, a way of, um, uh, of uh, fulfilling a, um, a structured leadership uh, skill and ways. Uh, so for also for personal development for those who are uh, young, Oh, and who wanted to be part of the Knights of Rizal. We do have our, like I said, our bylaws. We have our, I guess you can say, uh, red tape uh, protocol. And it's a, it's a good way to uh, network and interact with people from all walks of life, uh, from tricycle drivers to politicians, doctors, lawyers, um, and even the president, actually. Um, Another um, expectations and obligations of Knights of Rizal being an organization, you are expected to attend meetings, which is uh, once uh, a month. You're expected to pay your membership due, which is $25 a, a year, and it's been like that uh, for quite some time now. And the money that uh, you, uh, the membership um, uh, dues go to um, uh, the Philippines, to be able to help with the, their projects. You're also expected to help celebrate in at least two um, celebrations, which is the uh, birth anniversary of Rizal and the martyrdom of Rizal. Another, now on the flip side, uh, we, you can raise funds by um, having a Maria Clara um, coronation where uh, uh, maidens, daughters of members could be crowned as Maria Clara each year 
and you can have a souvenir program to be able to solicit. This is good because you're actually, instead of having a, um, a single celebration per family, you are celebrating with the community. So the celebration is much bigger, it's more grand, and just fitting for um, a, um, a, um, uh, a female, our daughters uh, reaching the age. Uh, uh, it's like a rite of uh, age. And uh, now, how to be chartered? This year, uh, we have a new bylaw, and we are on only uh, requiring at least five members, night members, to be um, uh, chartered. You will have to be uh, uh, endorsed by uh, a um, a member of the Knights of Rizal. Uh, there is an initiation process which is actually very public and it's not secretive. You would have to pay your first membership to and um, uh, procure medals uh, for the rank of Knights Rizal KR and at least a Barong uniform. Uh, you would also would have to have your own uh, officers. Eventually we, we recommend at least nine officers to cover all positions in the Knights of Rizal. Uh, you will have to be able to um, uh, have your application uh, sent to the Philippines and it will be acted upon by the members of the Supreme Council and after that you will be dubbed knight, knighted as uh, Knights of Rizal with all the um, privileges and rights of a member. Uh, including being um, having uh, uh, having uh, your uh, a sir uh, behind your name and your wife a lady behind their names so basically that's it it's really simple to be a member of the Knights of Rizal and we encourage everybody uh, they say that if you're Filipino or Filipino loving you should really be a member of the Knights of Rizal because uh, Jose Rizal was a it's not only a person that we celebrate but it's also a way of life of thinking and a, um, a pride to the um, Filipino race, Filipino uh, uh, nationality uh, and culture. So with that, that's uh, a very short um, talk about what the Knights of Rizal is. If there's any takeaway, it's not a cult. It's a um, organization that is recognized by the Philippine government. Um, it is a structured organization with its bylaws, rules, uh, and uh, protocol. It is um, really all civic-minded Filipinos and Filipino-loving um, male should really be a member uh, and uh, work towards um, the goals of uh, the Knights. So anyway, so thank you for listening and I hope you picked up uh, some points uh, to consider and um, uh, hopefully we'll see you in the next uh, assembly. Thank you.